In 1995, a company by the name of Synchronous Soft Corp released a product that had some pretty amazing claims. It was a piece of software called SoftRAM, a so-called RAM doubling software for Windows. It claimed to double your computer's memory without having to go through the hassle and expense of getting actual RAM and performing a hardware upgrade. With SoftRAM, 4 megabytes becomes 8 megabytes, and 8 megabytes becomes 16 megabytes. There's no need for hard RAM because SoftRAM works with all 386 and higher desktop and laptop computers, and with its one-click one-time installation, it was ideal for those computer users who wanted to start using more resource-intensive programs right away. Sounds incredible, right? Well, the only thing was, it was a total scam. This is a brand new copy of SoftRAM that I purchased just for your entertainment. Today we're going to open up this software for the first time since it left the factory 25 years ago. The version I have here is the first release of SoftRAM designed for Windows 3.1. It was released in May of 1995, three months before Windows 95 launched. The contents of the box are contained inside of a cardboard insert. Opening this up reveals a pamphlet that has everything we need to get started. There's an instruction manual, a registration card, and yeah, apparently Synchronous sold merch like a t-shirt and hat that you could actually get by sending this card in. And finally, one single floppy disk that contains the entire program. Alright, so that's what you would get in the box when you purchased SoftRAM, but what did it actually install on your computer? When you insert the floppy disk and run the setup executable, the first thing that you'll see is a splash screen saying, Congratulations on purchasing SoftRAM. The setup wizard itself is extremely basic. It will ask you for your name and company and let you choose where you want to install the program. Since the entire program is contained on a single floppy disk, the program only requires 950 kilobytes of hard drive space. This also means that the program installs rather quickly. Once it finishes copying files, a message box will appear informing us that we have 15,360 kilobytes of extended RAM. And that's it. The wizard then prompts you to restart your PC for the changes to take effect, so we'll do that. Upon logging back into Windows, you'll see that SoftRAM has enshrined itself in a splash screen that will display every time you log into Windows. Now the SoftRAM program itself is pretty basic. All of the quote-unquote functionality of the program is contained on this one single screen. Here we have two gauges, one showing the amount of soft RAM that the system has available to it, and the other showing the amount of free RAM the system has. The center contains stats about how much physical RAM, soft RAM, virtual memory, and total memory that the system has available to it. When soft RAM is running, the gauge on the left will automatically max out. Now you'll notice that the soft RAM and physical RAM meters in the center are about the same. This machine has 16 megabytes of RAM. Soft RAM is saying that it's giving the system an additional 16 megabytes of soft RAM, meaning that the system should have 32 megabytes of RAM available to it. All of the program's controls are contained at the bottom of the application. The arrows on the left allow you to increase or decrease the amount of soft RAM available to the system. Next to that, we have a button that enables or disables the program, the most basic options menu I've ever seen, which gives you literally one option to have the application stay on top of other windows or not, and finally, the help documentation. SoftRAM also includes a README document in the program group, but it contains the exact same info as the help documentation. It goes into more detail about how the program works, or at least allegedly works. There's actually a decent amount of information contained in here. It talks about virtual memory and how demand paging works, for example. SoftRAM claims to dynamically compress the contents in physical RAM by using its RAM analyst tool to calculate the most efficient compression method. It also claims to defragment memory in real time to create more contiguous memory. It basically makes it sound like it's a super advanced and sophisticated piece of software. The problem is though, the program doesn't do any of these things. So that begs the question, 
what does soft RAM actually do? Well, the short answer is, not much. In late 1995, numerous publications released articles where they investigated soft RAM's claims. One German publication did a very thorough analysis of soft RAM. Despite the fact that the program claimed to double your computer's RAM by using patent-pending compression technology, it in fact did not even attempt to perform any compression at all. SoftRAM's interface essentially falsified the statistics shown on the gauges. You weren't going to get double memory or any memory compression no matter how you configured the application. The only thing the program really did was increase the size of your page file. The page file, commonly also known as the swap file, essentially acts as a form of virtual memory that is stored on the hard disk. It allows the operating system to store certain data when the machine's physical RAM capacity has been exhausted. But the thing is, you could easily do this yourself for free without having to spend $79.95. Yeah, you heard me right. This piece of junk sold for $80, at least the version created for Windows 95 did. The Windows 3.1 version sold for a much lower price of $29.95. SoftRAM 95 was released right when Windows 95 launched in August of 1995. The installer is pretty much the same, along with the program. Aside from the 95 branding, the two editions of the program look identical. And just like the original version of SoftRAM, 95 makes absolutely no attempt to compress any memory or double your RAM. I'm not exactly sure what made Synchronous think that charging an additional $50 for this version of the program was justifiable. When these reports started to surface, it was initially believed that only the version of SoftRAM for Windows 95 did not work as intended, something that Synchronous actually publicly acknowledged. But upon further investigation, people discovered that the older version of SoftRAM for Windows 3.1 also does not make any attempts to compress memory. Despite all of this, Synchronous was able to sell over 700,000 copies of both versions of SoftRAM between May and December of 1995. These people purchased SoftRAM because it was advertised as a cheaper but just as effective alternative to purchasing actual RAM and performing a memory upgrade on your system. I mean, the FAQ document even has the balls to claim that SoftRAM functions exactly like physical RAM and that it effectively doubles the amount of memory available to Windows applications. As you can imagine, it didn't take long for the US government to get involved. The Federal Trade Commission started an investigation into Synchronous towards the end of 1995. The published report analyzed SoftRAM's claims one by one and found that SoftRAM 95 does not use compression technology or at least double the RAM available to a computer using Windows 95, nor does it achieve RAM compression ratios of up to five times and higher in a computer using Windows 95. In fact, SoftRAM 95 does not increase the RAM available to a computer using Windows 95. The report also found that Microsoft Incorporated, which, yeah, by the way guys, that was not Microsoft's actual company name, has not licensed, endorsed, or otherwise approved SoftRAM 95 for use with Windows 95. Now this is noteworthy, because on SoftRAM 95's packaging, Synchronous had put the Design for Windows 95 logo, something that can only be put on products that went through Microsoft's logo testing program. Now, in that article that I mentioned previously, Synchronous claims that they did get approval to use the logo, but in September of 1995. A Microsoft employee quoted in the same article provides some further clarification, saying that while Synchronous did submit a version of SoftRAM for logo testing, the version they actually shipped was an older version containing bugs that was not submitted for testing. I will leave the full article down below in this video's description. It's definitely worth a read if you want to hear more about the testing methodology performed on the program and how the publication came to the conclusion that SoftRAM didn't do anything it claimed to do. When reports of SoftRAM's lack of functionality came out, some began to refer to the product as placebo software, a program that relies on the placebo effect, hoping that the user, by simply seeing a gauge saying your memory is being doubled, will simply believe it and attribute any faster performance they think they experience to SoftRAM doing just what it said it would do. I mean, it had the Design for Windows 95 logo on the box, so it must have been approved by Microsoft. 
right? In 1996, Synchronous faced not only with an FTC investigation, but also individual lawsuits from customers decided to settle all of these disputes. While I wasn't able to find the exact amount of money the company was fined or had to pay in these lawsuits, they did come to an agreement with the FTC to pay a rebate to any SoftRAM user that requested it. So it all worked out in the end, right? Well, no, not really. The crazy thing is, this rebate was only $10. Yeah, so unfortunately, nobody got 100% of their money back, except possibly for those customers who filed a lawsuit against Synchronous directly. But it's likely that Synchronous wasn't even able to pay back the $10 rebates. The company filed for bankruptcy in 1998, with over $4.5 million in debt and only $200,000 worth of assets. In an interview with CNET, Haley Ramir, the company's bankruptcy counsel, stated, I can't even tell you how many creditors there are because there are all these $10 rebates. Synchronous tried to bounce back from the scandal, releasing a few other Windows utilities in the late 90s, but the damage had already been done. Despite the fact that the company's CEO tried to claim that the company's problems were history, people didn't forget the SoftRAM incident. And for a company that released a product that ended up not doing anything it claimed to do, why would they? This video is brought to you by Zyro, the easy to use website builder that allows you to create beautiful, functional websites in no time. Even if you don't know anything about HTML or web design. Zyro makes it easy to get started by offering amazing designer-created templates specifically tailored to various use cases. Using one of these templates, I was able to create a website to showcase my YouTube channel in just under an hour. All of the elements you see on screen can be arranged to your liking, and Zyro's drag-and-drop interface makes this process effortless. Something that I find cool is how Zyro uses artificial intelligence to help you accomplish tasks. Need to quickly generate a paragraph of text to use on your site? Check out Zyro's AI Writer. Want to predict how your site visitors will react to the placement of certain elements? The AI heat map has you covered. But website creation isn't the only thing that Zyro has to offer. One thing that goes great with a new website is a new domain name, and Zyro has you covered here as well. Not only that, you can also create a new logo for your brand using the Logo Maker. Want to know the best part? You can get started with Zyro today for free. But if you want to get access to more features like using your own domain name, check out one of their paid plans starting at just $3 a month. That's all for today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed the bizarre but interesting story of SoftRAM. If you did, be sure to give this video a like and get subscribed. And if any of you guys out there purchased SoftRAM back in the 90s, be sure to let us know if you actually got your rebate. I want to thank all of you so much for watching, and as always, I will see you all in the next video.